Welcome to The Relay, a podcast from Gulf Relay, where we dive behind the scenes of our operations, teams, and industry. Hey guys, welcome back to The Relay. My name is Maddie Cook, and I am joined by Blaze Baldwin this week. Blaze, you want to give a little introduction, a little bit about yourself? Sure, thanks for having me, Maddie. Excited to be here. Uh, my name is Blanks Baldwin. I'm the executive vice president of Gulf Relay. I've been here for 11 years, so I've got to watch a pretty significant evolution of our company. You know, when I first started, uh, we were just a handful of trucks and trailers and uh, a couple guys trying to figure some things out in the background. And today we have over 250 trucks and 700 trailers, and it's been quite an adventure. Yeah. So give us a little visual picture. Back when you started, what did it look like? Now we have three locations, 1021, 105, 108. Back then, I'm assuming you guys didn't have that. What did y'all have and what did it look like? So from you know how we were set up, we, had, we were just a small office and we subbed out most of our maintenance at the time. So we didn't have to have much of a shop like what we do today. Uh, we relied on a lot of vendors to take care of us in that department. But um, as far as our kind of our freight network and how that worked, um, we, we typically started most things in Mississippi, right? And um, we had a, f a handful of customers you know, locally here. and um, what we did was we, where they were sending us, we would try to build a little bit of network and, and run a little bit on the, on the brokerage market to bring us back. Mm -hmm. So um, very unpredictable market, very different from today. Yep. Um, so um, I'm sure we'll get into the, a little bit of that later on. We will. So basically the out and back model, right? And yes. um, we still have some of those same customers today, don't we, that sure. we started with initially? What, which ones would those be? You know, so we work in, uh, a lot of different areas from a commodity standpoint. You know, we, we're obviously very large in the manufacturing area, you know about this. And, um, and so beverage is also a big part of that. Um, and those were customers that they were at the beginning. Obviously we've grown those um, because we've grown in trucks and the relationships uh, have still stayed there. So um, we've been able to um, expand into different areas uh, and, and really kind of hone into what is good for our market and our drivers. So back then, when you did the out and backs, did you go all over the country or was it focused in one region? Did you do the Midwest, the Northeast, like we do now? Or was it much more just, you know, whatever they have, we were willing, y'all were willing to figure it out at that time? Sure, it was a little bit of figure it yeah. out, right? And um, you do that from a customer satisfaction standpoint, we were really trying to uh, figure ourselves out too. Um, so we went to areas that we didn't even know were bad networks, right? And and or didn't have freight that came back into areas that could get us to the next one. So we learned a lot of things the hard way. Um, and now that with our technology and uh, really honing in on who we are as a company, it's allowed us um, to really focus in our customer network. And when we participate in bids, we're very specific about what type of freight we want and how often we're able to execute on it. Okay. What sort of different commodities have we added since you've been here in the beginning? And sort of how do those different commodities, how does that expand Gulf Relays? geographical footprint? Sure. So, I mean, obviously, if you look at a regional map of, uh, you know, how the United States works from a manufacturing standpoint and uh, just general goods, um, but retail has been a big part of who we have really expanded into, right? right? And so when you look at the retail market, uh, there's usually a lot of consistency with that, uh, which is attractive to us. It's attractive yeah. to our drivers, and we want to put, get, put them on regular routes. Um, and typically, they have a good amount of volume um, that allows for you to create those regular kind of engineered routes mm -hmm. that we talk about uh, behind the scenes. And um, it's good for not only uh, the driver and, and us, but it's also good for uh, the customers we're working with. I mean, they get to know dock workers, they get to build relationships uh, from, from all the way down here to, to right here. I mean, there's really nothing that's left um, from a relationship standpoint to be able to grow with. Yeah, it, it provides a good consistency of service too. It does. Um, so one of the things that's interesting that, that has been pretty recently developed, um, at least since I've been here, is the dedicated realm. Yes. You have really been at the forefront of you know, taking, taking charge of that and growing the dedicated space. Do you want to talk about that, your history, where, you, where that came from and how you, what you've done to expand it? Sure. So during the pandemic, what we realized was you know, drivers have always been very important to our organization. And uh, you know, as we reflect on um, you know, the last couple of years, we have really took a... Um, a focus toward our dedicated divisions and and uh, what that does for not only are your drivers and and uh, your customers it's just consistency mm -hmm. right they know what their routes are um, they know what their miles are going to be they know what their pay is going to be and especially during the pandemic there was such a time there um, where we had a shortage of drivers uh, they could work um, local jobs and things like that 
So it really drew them in and we needed a way to differentiate ourselves in the driver market, but also, you know, give us more of a bondish feel to our P&L. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we, uh, we attacked that. We were able to go after about five or six customers mm -hmm. currently um, that we've really been able to grow that with. Now there's some smaller type right. operations, but we have some larger ones, you know. Uh, some of our fleets, uh, I think, are approaching 30 yeah. as a group under a customer. Now they service different areas mm -hmm. inside of that. Uh, but that's also really good to attract drivers from those areas because they know they're going to go out and then be able to come back to that basically hub and spoke type deal. Right. It's a great setup. It is. It's more of a um, guaranteed sort of home time feel. And yes. another thing that it does on the company side is it sort of insulates a company from the markets or the, the ebbs and flows of a market like we're seeing now. Those are great points. Yeah, they are. What percentage of our fleet right now is dedicated, if you if you know that? So I would say somewhere around 20%, yeah. 20 to 25% uh, true dedicated. Now we also do an engineered type feel, mm -hmm. which we spoke to a little earlier today, which is where we actually take two customers that are extremely consistent, uh, that are you know back and forth type plans. Let's say Jackson to Chicago, one customer, mm -hmm. Chicago back to Jackson is another customer. So we we've able we were able to uh, use your skill sets and and a lot of data. Uh, to, to bring those two together and, and create our own internal engineered uh, routing. So very cool. How, do you, how much do you think we're looking to grow the dedicated division within Gulf Relay? Do you expect that we're going to be at 30%, maybe at 40%, or where do you see that going with the future of Gulf Relay and where it's headed? You know, from a percentage standpoint, it's hard to say, Maddie. We have uh, been so focused on growth in general. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say two years from now, we could be anywhere from 300 to 400 trucks. So to give you a true percentage, I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, it's a little bit off of what we want to do um, and how you know reactionary we want to be to that type of situation. Mm -hmm. But I would tell you that a, a healthy um, trucking company would probably like to be around twenty-five to thirty percent dedicated. That's a good. That's a good percentage. And just while we're on the topic of topic of growth, as far as a customer base, maybe a commodity base, if 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 you know that, what do you see um, as far as like what are you and your sales team looking to attack? in the future for, for the asset division to you know, grow that. Are we looking at any sort of different, maybe um, trailer issue, you know, trailer types or? You know, it's a loaded question, Maddie. It, it is, um, yes. But for, if, if we continue, you know, to evolve as a company, we're gonna see different uh, changes inside the market, right? And uh, we've all learned from some of the things that happened during the pandemic. Uh, you know, you'll hear the words recession proof right. uh, used uh, quite a bit now. And so it's really um, looking to the future. There's a lot of uh, green type tactic in, in what we do. We're looking for more of a retail base, like what we talked about earlier. Uh, consistency really is key for us. Um, you know, commodity is almost secondary to that. Right. Um, it, would Would you agree to that? I would, yeah, I don't care if it's retail. I don't care if it's chemicals. But if if you have so, if you have a customer that's going to have 10 of the same load going to the same place every week, I can build a network around that. Yeah. And that, that for me is what we're looking for. Yeah, so you take it, you know, look now, beverage season for us is probably very much on the cusp of taking yeah. off. Yeah. But, you know, near the end uh, of summer and into uh, late fall, you'll see that dip. Right. And that's just, it's not a great thing for our company. Um, it's, it's good because it helps during the summertime. Mm. But when you look at a customer, you really want them to have less of this and more of you know some of this, right? right? So that way you, that consistency is there for your drivers, uh, for your company, for your um, account management, dispatch mm -hmm. team. It really affects everybody in the org at that point. It does, and that's been one of the advantages as far as um, our commodity diversification. Because yes. as beverage dies off, you know, in the, in the late summer, we're going to see retail surge. Exactly. Um, so ideally, you are looking for a commodity that kind of flatlines yep. the year long. But what I think your team, especially, has done a, a great job of is diver is commodity diversification. Absolutely. So we have different strengths in different markets. That's exactly right. And you know, uh, we've been at one of the things we we didn't get to really dive into earlier was just how much we have diversified mm -hmm. our network and. And so when, when we do see dips in the market and things like that, we're not seeing one customer lose 30 loads. We're seeing one customer lose five or six loads. Right. And that across the, you know, the grand scheme of things doesn't hurt us quite as bad as losing you know, a, to a big dip. Right. Um, if you could say sort of just closing thoughts here, if, if you could say anything to our driver fleet about the future of Gulf Relay, about how your team is impacting that, what thoughts do you have? Future is always strong for me. I have always been excited to wake up every morning and come to Gulf Relay. Uh, you have a great team behind you from a sales standpoint. Everybody in this organization, mm -hmm. Maddie, is, is fantastic to work with. But I would tell you, uh, we work every day. We sit in on every operational meeting that, that 
uh, is called on us for. We pay attention to the markets. Uh, we listen to the Bryce's and Maddie's of the world. Uh, Andy, of course, uh, to help guide us based off the, the things that y'all desire yep. um, to help drive our company forward. You know, protecting the trailers, making sure there's trailer availability for our drivers. Um, you know, uh, just really focusing on customers that are gonna be consistent and give you the mileage and home time that you need uh, and deserve. Um, it's it's not easy being a driver and, and I thank you very much for it. Yep. Well, thank you, Blake. You are a delight to work with and um, I appreciate your time. Thank you for, for everybody, letting me be here. Yeah, for everybody that's watching, thank you so much and uh, y'all stay safe.